Okay, this is a quick tutorial on how to export a project out of Premiere once you're finished. Um, what I've got here in my timeline, if I zoom up on my timeline, I'm going to go over this and hit tilde, hit shift uh, plus to kind of zoom everything up there. Um, I've got this project at the very beginning. What I kind of tell people to be careful of, especially if, especially if you're uploading to YouTube, uh, your project's going to immediately fade in right when YouTube starts, and then when it's done, it'll immediately go to some like there, all the little other clips that you can see on YouTube, all the little previews that come up. So uh, I like to have a like a couple second lead in of black and a and kind of a couple seconds of black at the end, maybe th two to three seconds. Um, kind of my standard is I, I usually go for about like at least two seconds on YouTube. So what I'm going to do here first before we export out is I'm going to prepare this by uh, going down the little file down here, little new item icon, and click on that. And I'm going to tell it to do a generate a new black video. So that's just down in the bottom right hand corner of your project uh, window. And uh, it's going to, this is 4K footage, so it's going to make a black video clip based on my timeline. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK, and there's my black video right there. I'm going to double click on it and load it into the source monitor. It's just black video, that's all it is. So now I'm going to click on my playhead position here and type in 3, period, the 3 for 3 seconds and period for the uh, each dot you add is like a placeholder for two zeros, so that's um, that's three seconds and zero frames. And hit is it enter. Oh, that's actually three seconds, but uh, that, that that's fine. Let's put three seconds. I'm going to put uh, an O for hit O for out point. So I've got a three second black clip. Hit Shift three to go to my timeline. Hit Home to make sure I'm at the beginning because my playhead was somewhere else in the middle. I hit Home and it goes to the beginning. Now I can just hit comma, and it will. Uh, do a ripple edit, it'll basically drop that in. It's an insert, drops it in and shoves it over. And I've got three seconds of black at the beginning. <coughs> now all I have to do is hit end, goes to the end of the timeline, and I hit comma again or period at this point, insert or overwrite, and it drops that uh, same black video in there for three seconds as well. So now I hit the uh, slash above the return key and look at my entire timeline. Slash, there we go. And I've got three seconds of black at the beginning, three seconds of black at the end. There we go. Now I'm ready to export. So now I'm going to uh, hit Command or Control M. If you're on a PC, Control M. If you're on a Mac, Command M. M as in master. I guess you guys, because we're mastering our video here, or I guess it's media, export to media, uh, export media. And it'll bring open this window. Now, um, you can also, you can do a couple things here. You can send this, if you want to keep working in Premiere while this is exporting, you can hit Q, and it will send it over to Media Encoder. I've got a separate tutorial on Media Encoder. Uh, if you want to watch that, uh, here I'll put up the link right there. There's the link. I hope I hope I remember to put it in. If not, just search Media Encoder. Yeah, that, uh, but you'll find my Media Encoder tutorial that shows you the Media Encoder route, which is very similar to what it is in Premiere. So down here you've got a quick little playhead. You can kind of skim through this and look look at your footage. Uh, depending on if you have effects and stuff, it'll take a minute to render. Uh, take a second to render. Uh, but right now it's going to export out our sequence in and out, which is basically from the beginning of the sequence to the end of the sequence. You can change a range and make it just export a range if you want to, and it'll show custom there. But if you just do sequence in and out, it's going to do the entire timeline there. Um, now this is 4K footage, just a little wider aspect ratio than um, the 1920 by 1080. So this is thinking it's going to be going out. I've already had a preset in here. Um, you can have all this match if you want to. Usually the default uh, up here, if you have match sequence settings, it'll match everything. To, but uh, you have to be careful with this because this actually encodes. Um, if you do match sequence settings, it won't actually match your um, resolution. It'll match the codec that you're editing out of most uh, timelines, and Premiere is going to be an MPEG preview timeline that is converting, whether it's red footage or ProRes or whatever, it's converting it to an MPEG preview, which is the basic native engine that Premiere runs off of. So let's uh, quickly go through this here. So I'm going to export this out and prepare this for YouTube. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go up to Format, pull this down. Uh, this might be on some other sort of setting up here, like QuickTime or something like that. If it, if it is, QuickTime works, but I'm going to recommend that we use H.264. So you're going to pull it down H.264. That is a codec or an encode that uh, that YouTube is very familiar with and YouTube uh, uses natively as well. So if you click on H.264, it's going to pull this down here. Uh, at first, it's going to say 
match source, high, high bit rate if you want to do 4K footage and do kind of a, a nice quality master. This is one way you can do an H.264 master. Uh, there are better versions if you're doing like 4K footage like uh, ProRes and uh, what are some other things here you might be able to use like QuickTime ProRes. H.264 works well. DNX is another good uh, codec as well for uh, like a high quality master but for YouTube H.264. I'm going to pull down this and uh, under the presets, it'll bring up all the presets under H.264. And I'm going to go to YouTube. So if you want to quickly go to YouTube, you can either go down here to this arrow and arrow down all the, until it gets to the bottom, or let's try this again. When you click on it, instead of scrolling all the way down, you can just hit Y and it jumps to YouTube settings. Now we can just go down and arrow down a couple times. Oops. And we can go down to if you're using 4K footage, there is a 4K setting in here to export to. For YouTube standard, I'm just going to be doing 1920 by 1080. And I click on 1080p. Um, and now we've got, so we're exporting to H.264 and YouTube 1080p. Now we're, notice we're check marking. We've got vi export video and export audio. It's exporting both out. If you go down here, you're going to see the basic settings here uh, for YouTube. Uh, this is being converted to 1920 by 1080. This is a little bit wider aspect ratio than 16 by 9, so it's adding letterboxes, which it will do on the top and bottom. If you want that to match the aspect ratio, you're going to have to match the source and make it 4K video. Uh, and if you don't want it quite that large, you can actually turn these things, you can cut these things in half. I'm going to uncheck that so it's no longer, these items are all matching the source right here. Matching frame rate, progressive scan, square pixels, everything is matching the source quality and all that. But if you want, um, if you want this down to half resolution around 19, 19, 1920 by 1080, what we can do is we'll just simply go to calculator and figure out what half of that is. 4096 divided by 2 equals 2048. So that's basically 2K. We're going for a 2K clip here. So you can go 2048 if you wish. Uh, this is a little different than YouTube settings though. But, uh, and now 2160. That's how I did these big letterboxes here. And so you do 2160 divided by 2 as well. And 1080. And there is my 2K window. No longer is a letterbox. This is 1920, or this is 2048 by 1080, which I believe is very similar to the um, quality they pro project in theaters. It's a little bit larger than 1920 by 1080. But uh, since we're just going to YouTube, we we can automatically have it um, do 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna go to YouTube once again. Your 19 and it'll letterbox it for us right there. Okay, but all these things you want it to basically match. Usually a lot of these things will come up as matched anyway, but it's going to match progressive scan, going to match, match square pixels. <coughs> uh, usually all you have to do is just tell it to do YouTube 1080 and it's set. One other thing to note here as we scroll down is the bitrate settings. With YouTube nowadays, the quality, this used to export out as a default around eight megabits per second. This is how much color information and data there is left is left in your clip. Uh, this is red footage that we're using that I'm using here, which is probably somewhere around 100 megabits per second, and we're compressing it down to 16 megabits per second, taking out all that color information and metadata that we don't need to retain for YouTube. But um, I would take uh, the suggestion from Adobe uh, here and use at least 16. I like to put it up to 20. Uh, get a little bit higher quality. There's a variable bitrate one pass. It'll change quality, uh, turn the quality up and down as it needs it. As there's more uh, dynamic to the dynamics to the shot, as there's more motion to the shot, it'll bring up the quality. It does what's called a variable bitrate. The idea behind this is to keep the file size down as much as possible with keeping the quality up. Uh, you can do constant bitrate if you want to. It'll do an encode a lot faster. This is the fastest encode it will do. If you're going to do that, you probably have to pump it up to around like uh, 25 to 30 megabits per second, at least 30 megabits, probably around 30 megabits per second for a constant for it to get really nice high quality, but then it will take a long time to upload to YouTube. YouTube will accept this, but it's going to take a while. So if you do 16 as a standard or around 20, I would recommend putting it at least variable bitrate one pass. Two pass is going to take twice as long, actually more, more than twice as long to do uh, then it will, will take to do the variable bitrate one pass with the CBR. It'll go through it one time, detect all the motion, go through it again, and uh, use those keyframes that it's set to basically um, maximize the quality. Uh, so if you can do a two pass, it'll take longer, but it will look better, and the quality will look better, and you'll have less compression on your file. So this is going to be the highest quality right here. Variable bitrate two pass around 20 uh, will be really good settings for YouTube.
So once we got all those set, we're going to go up to output name. We're going to click on this. We're going to, this is going to tell it what you want it to name the file and the location. Click on that. And on this, I'm just going to go under, let me make a new folder under my kill project, which is the name of this project. I'll just call this final movie. Um, if you're doing different cuts or whatever, you can put them all in this one folder here. I'm going to call this, um, actually the name of the movie is Wanted for Murder. And I'm going to call it Final. Let me correct that there. Wanted for Murder Final. There we go. So I've chosen a location. I've typed in a name. I hit Save, and it has that name and location saved. You'll see the output right there. And, uh, and that is really about it. Now I'm going to hit export, and I'm going to let this encode. Um, it's going to re render the audio, then it will start uh, building the video, and this will take, uh, for a video like this, this is red footage on my, my system, will probably take about like uh, five minutes or so, five, ten minutes. So I'm going to let this go. If you're the bigger your project, the more effects you have, the longer it will take to encode a project. Uh, but I'm just going to let this go, and we'll come back, and I'll show you what happens when you're finished. Okay, now that this is finished, I'm going to go to my finder here. I'm going to go under, um, let's see, Final Movie. And you'll notice a file here that's been exported out uh, right there. And it shows the size. It's just under 200 megabytes for a file that's just about a minute and a half long, which is a, a decent size and uh, and very uploadable, easy to upload to, to YouTube. So that's ready to go to YouTube. If you want, What I would recommend doing before you upload to YouTube or send this off, I would... Uh, um, I would open up and just play it, make sure that it all looks good before you send it off. Um, one way of doing that, I like using BLC as a player. So playing QuickTime or Windows Media, MP4s are pretty standard universal, universally, but uh, um, we'll play in both uh, QuickTime and in um, Windows Media. But I, I like VLC. Uh, I'd recommend downloading VLC. It's free. Uh, just go to the internet and type in VLC, and you'll find this player that's kind of a universal, or it's like a big player that plays almost any any sort of codec, any sort of video file that you may have. Um, yeah, you right click. I like to right click and go to VLC and play through the video. There's my three seconds of black. Oops. There you go, and plays back just fine. So, full, and if you want to watch it full screen in VLC, every player that you use will uh, have a different way of doing full screen. And on a uh, Mac, you do Apple F. On a PC, you just hit F. Uh, if you're using VLC, and it will go full screen. And uh, there you go. Now we can play the movie back and see if it looks nice and nice high quality, nice HD quality, and that is ready to upload to YouTube. So, and just kind of skim through it, play through it, and just make sure that your whole project works. Make sure it has the uh, three seconds of black at the end, and the whole thing is there, and you're good to go.